What's up everybody? Today I have something really fun for you. We are going to be comparing different AI language models. And I'm not just talking about ChatGPT and Claude, like the two biggest ones that we talk about here on the channel. I'm talking about all of the major open source models that you may have heard about if you're in certain spaces. I haven't talked about them on this channel before, so we're really gonna be testing them out and seeing how good they are. Some of these you can actually install on your home computer if you have a powerful enough computer to run it and do it there. But I'm actually going to show you a tool that you can use that will allow you to do it all in the cloud. It makes it a lot easier if you're not technically inclined like myself. And so let's just jump right in. All right, so the tool that I'm talking about here is called Open Router. And if you haven't heard of Open Router, they are a great way to gain access to a lot of the models that you might not know. A while back, I did a video and I talked about a website called dev. or nat.dev, I think it was called, which was also, a, it's a very similar site, but this one actually has more models than that one. And so this is the one we're going to be using. Also, you can use this one in other applications, depending on the applications. I know we haven't talked about this, but... Future Fiction Academy now has their own little chat bot that they have created. And with that one, you can take your API key from Open Router and plug it into that and then use those models in their tool. So there are cool things you can do with Open Router. But once you've logged in, it'll look like this, as you can see here. And you're going to want to click on Chat with Models. Before we go to that, though, I want to just show you in settings how the pricing works. This is a pay as you go model. And I wanna just before we get into anything, show you exactly how much money I have in this server. It's being a little slow today. All right, as you can see, I paid it $5 and haven't even used a whole lot of it. I have $4.32 left here. And so this, like I said, this is a pay as you go model. You can even use crypto, which is interesting. And you can just add credits. You can add as much as you want here. And then it will deduce this from the amount that you have. So we're going to take a look at this now, $4.32. And we'll take a look at it when we're done with the testing we're going to be doing today. And we're going to be putting these to the test and using a whole lot of different models. So I expect this to be down quite a bit. But going back to the home page here, all you have to do is click on chat with models. And then on the right here, you'll see this thing called characters. Now, this is actually clever of them because it allows you to have specific fine, well, not fine-tuned, but specific models tailored in different ways. And you can have two characters from the same language model. So I'll give you an example. So if you click add a character here, you can give it a name. I'm just going to leave it at the name of the model that we're going to be using. But you can come here, we're just going to say GPT-4 and then just hit this green button when you're ready. And then once you've done that, you can open this up and actually do a little bit more advanced stuff. So we could come here to advanced settings and play around with the temperature, the top P, the max to tokens. I am going to increase the max tokens as far as it'll go. That will increase the amount of money that it charges me. But overall, uh, that should be good. And then you can also raise the chat memory. I'll just leave this as it is. And I'm going to leave everything else at default for now. And now we have chat GPT-4 or just GPT-4 added here. So I'm going to go through and add a few more here. We've already got GPT-3.5. I'm actually going to change this to GPT-3.5 Turbo 16K. So we get the one that can handle a lot more. And I'm just going to turn that all the way up. We got one called Mythomax here, which is one of the open source ones, I believe. We've got Llama, which is the one that comes out of Meta. And we got GPT-4. I'm going to add Claude version 2. We're going to add this one called Manser, which also, I don't know why, but it's called Weaver here. I'm not an expert on any of these in particular. Manser, Weaver, Weaver, okay. And so if you want to see me do a deep dive on any one of these, I'd be happy to do that. Let's go ahead and increase this one to, let's just increase it to 8,000. We're going to add this one, Pygmalion. 
or Methalian. We're gonna add Google's Palm, Palm 2. And last but not least, we're gonna add Mistral, which is another open source one I know a lot of people have been playing around with. All right, now that I have all of these, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different models queued up here. We're gonna give this open router the same prompt. And since we have all of these enabled, it will answer that prompt in every single language. We could turn off one of these or two of them if we wanted to, if we didn't want it to include that, but we're gonna do it for all of them. This is why I say we're pushing this. So we'll see how much money it actually spends out of my $4.32. And I know this isn't the, the best way to test these models because as anyone who's played around with AI models knows, it takes a good amount of time to really work with a model to figure it out because every model is different and every model really requires its own sort of way of prompting it. And so using the same prompts for every model isn't necessarily that efficient, but at the same time, it's the best way to measure quality across the board. It's like standardized testing in our educational system. Imperfect, but kind of the best option we have. So we're gonna start with a brainstorming prompt and here's the prompt. I'd like to write an urban fantasy novel about a woman who slays mythical beasts for a living. Please help me expand on this idea by providing potential details about interesting protagonists, antagonists, side characters, settings, plot twists, and subplots. Make a list of 100 possibilities. With that in mind, we'll go ahead and hit enter. And now you can see it is answering the prompt in every single one of these models, which is pretty crazy. All right, so let's see what we've got here. We've got this one's from 3.5. Protagonist is a brave and skilled monster slayer named Ava who hides a tragic secret about her past. Ava's mentor and father figure, a wise old monster hunter named Gabriel who guides her on her journey. Yada, 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 yada. This seems pretty typical, pretty generic, but typical of... 3.5 here. Let's look at Mythomax, one of the newer ones that we're testing. The protagonist is a badass female slayer named Alexis who has been fighting mythical beasts since she was a teenager. Alexis's weapon of choice is a magical sword that she inherited from a grandfather. Her closest friend and confidant is a mage named Isaac who provides her with spells and potions to aid in her hunts. She lives in a secret underground bunker, yada, yada, yada. Okay, this one didn't get to 100 like I asked for, that's okay. It could have just run out of token limits. And it also didn't structure things like ChatGPT did, or the, sorry, GPT 3.5. Uh, but it is giving me some decent ideas here that I'd say are on par with what GPT is capable of doing. So still not too bad. It's kind of just exploring the different aspects of this character and what you know, what kind of things we could explore in, in that setting. Uh, let's look at Llama. This is one from Meta. Sure, I'd be happy to help. Thank you, Llama. Here are 100 possibilities. Alexis Thompson. It's funny, they named her Alexis as well. A fierce and fearless hunter with a quick wit and sharp tongue. I am a shadow hunter, a mysterious and elusive woman with a dark past and a penchant for solo missions. Okay, it's got a couple more there. Antagonist, the Shadow King, a powerful and malevolent being who controls an army of mythical beasts. That would make sense. Side characters, Ziffer, a mischievous and loyal sidekick who is a skilled hacker and tech expert, etc. Setting, a dark and gritty metropolis that exists in secret beneath the streets of a major city. That kind of makes sense for the genre. So it definitely knows the genre. Okay. Not anything groundbreaking, but not too bad. Let's look at GPT-4. Protagonist, a stoic woman raised in a family of monster hunters, a cheerful woman who uses her beast slaying as a form of stress relief. Antagonist, an evil sorcerer who aims to control all mythical beasts, a mad scientist creating beasts for profit. Yeah, these are good. These are slightly better, I'd say, than what we've seen before. Side character is a psychic who helps the protagonist to locate the beast, a retired beast hunter who mentors the protagonist. Okay, let's look at Claude 2, which is currently my favorite from the ones I've worked with. 100 possibilities. She hunts creatures like dragons, griffins, unicorns that have escaped into the human world. She uses both medieval weapons like swords and modern weapons like guns. She has a wise mentor, drains her in slaying techniques. Eh. This one's kind of like Mythomax. It's not really giving me anything in the same structure that I want, but it is getting pretty creative here. Like she battles a Japanese demon bent on taking human hosts. She investigates slaying copied, slayings copied from a cult horror movie. 
So there's some interesting here, interesting things here, but yeah, not not quite as good as I expected. Weaver, it seems, actually wasn't able to, to work, so we'll maybe try that again later. Let's take a look at that. Okay, wasn't able to get very much at all, but let's see what it did give us. A strong female protagonist with a dark past who uses her skills in martial arts and weaponry to take down mythical creatures. There's a mysterious organization that trains and employs her to fight against these creatures, giving her access to advanced technology and resources. A secret alliance of other hunters who join forces. All right, so yeah, these are all kind of similar to what we've seen before. And then last we have Mistral. Oh, Mistral got the structure here, the same as the GPT models. That's pretty good. Her name is Lila. A fiercely independent and experienced monster hunter. She is a skilled fighter with a deep understanding of mythology. Lila has unique abilities to communicate with mythical creatures. Her ultimate goal is to protect humanity from mythical monsters. Antagonist, the lead leader of the monsters, is a malevolent force who seeks to dominate humanity. Powerful sorcerer. Has a contingency plan to stop Lila from interfering. I like that. Side characters, a young apprentice monster hunter who looks up to Lila as a mentor, a mysterious stranger who could be either an ally or an enemy, depending on his motives. I like that. And the setting, the story takes place in a medieval world with forests, castles, and villages. Plot twist, Lila discovers a hidden history about the monster that challenges everything she thought she knew. She discovers that a powerful ally has been secretly working with the antagonist. So yeah, not too bad here. Subplots, Lila uncovers a conspiracy within her own group of monster hunters. She learns about the culture and customs of the mythical creatures and how they interact with each other. All right, so overall, I think I'd have to give the edge to both of the GPT models, 3.5 did okay too, and Mistral for brainstorming. Mistral actually surprised me here. I thought it was pretty good, and I've heard good things about Mistral, so I'm not, I think that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and clear this chat. And we're going to give it another one. This time we're going to give it more of a marketing type prompt. So if we were using this in our marketing, and what, how would we do it? So this is the prompt. I would like you to write 20 headlines for use in social media. The headlines should involve a hook that uses pattern interrupt to catch attention. Using some fancy marketing words there. These headlines should be for a dark fantasy book with the following concept. And then the concept is, in a world where the dead are brought back to life as slaves, a young necromancer must choose between saving her undead lover and fighting for the rights of all the enslaved dead. This is a concept from an old book I was working on that I stopped working on because it just wasn't interesting to me anymore. It wasn't my initial idea. So, But I thought I'd reuse some of it and I'll use it in the next prompt as well. So let's go ahead and let this go and run with all of the different models. Looks like once again, Weaver was unable to run. So I'm just going to turn that one off for now and we can maybe try it at a different date. So we got a couple of things here out of GPT 3.5. Unleashed, a young necromancer's forbidden love tears at the fabric of a world ruled by the undead. Death becomes her. <laughs> I've heard that before. A gripping dark fantasy tale of forbidden romance. All right, so these are all pretty generic. Nothing particularly good here, in my opinion. Let's look at Mythomax. Rise from the grave or fight for freedom, the heart-wrenching choice for a, a young necromancer. Holy, unholy bonds, a tale of love and rebellion in a world of undead slaves. Breaking chains of death. All right, these are, I think, a little bit better than 3.5, but still not particularly amazing. Let's look at Llama. Ooh, raising the dead has never been so deadly. Love in a world of shadow and bone, enslaved by life, freed by death. When the dead rise, who will stand? A necromancer's quest for love and justice. These are actually much better. And I wasn't expecting this because from everything I've heard, Llama is not the best. But it is Facebook's or or rather Meta's language model. And who is the king of advertising right now? It's Meta. And so it actually doesn't surprise me that maybe somewhere in all of their training data, they've been feeding it all of these ads. And perhaps that is actually had a large effect on the quality of this output because this is way better than the GPT models we've seen so far. Let's look at GPT-4. Can love transcend death? A tale of uncommon romance and unsettling reality. On this side of death, yeah, these aren't really much better than 3.5. I'm just going to skip those. They're not great. Claude 2 has traditionally done well for me for headlines. So let's see. Death is only the beginning. One necromancer dares to fight for the undead. In a world where the dead obey the living, can love conquer all? She raised the dead, but can she free their souls? 
He was her lover in life. Now he belongs to her in death, but for how long? These are also better. Uh, these are on par with the ones that Llama 2 gave us. So, yeah, not perfect, but not too bad. Thalian? Someone please tell me how you pronounce that. Unleash the Undead, a thrilling tale of love and rebellion in a world of dark magic. Rise from the Ashes, a haunting journey of heartbreak and hope. Yeah, these are almost exactly the same type of headline that you would expect from the GPT models. Not super great. And last but not least, let's look at Mistral. The dead walk again, but are they really alive? Fight for the rights in this dark fantasy tale. Love in the afterlife, a young necromancer's dilemma. The undead rise again, a fight for freedom and justice in a world of slavery. The price for love, how a necromancer must choose between saving her undead lover and fighting for the right rights of all slavers. All right, so these are okay, but still probably on the same. It's funny that they all seem to use the same format. The, the ones that don't do that great all have the same format of, you know, a kind of a title here, then a colon, and then something else. And that's fine. I kind of get where they're coming from with that framework, but it doesn't actually work really well in this situation. I, I'd say the two that were that were the best were Claude here and Llama, which did not have that format, and were a little bit more hooky. Like this is this is actually getting my attention. So that's headlines i'm pleasantly surprised by llama's performance so maybe experiment with llama for marketing things it might perhaps do a better job at that and claude also did very well as well so let's go ahead and clear the chat and i have one more chat here because let's face it we're all here to write books right and so i've got one of my writing prompts this is a much longer prompt it says write 600 words of a chapter using the following details genre dark fantasy key characters in the scene and then i've pasted in the characters uh, this is from that dark fantasy that we were just talking about i put pasted the style here and then the story beats to cover i've got one two three story beats here i'm not going to read the whole thing but uh, we're just going to let that go and see how how good is the quality of the prose this is a, something that's a little hard to objectively judge but I'm going to do my best and see which ones I actually think work the best. Also, something that I noticed here, Palm 2 has somehow just neglected to run. So maybe I'll do another video in the future looking at Palm 2. This is the technology behind Bard if you use Bard. I haven't done too much experimenting with it, but I'll probably do a future video looking at that specific language model. But let's go ahead and dive into this one. So starting with GPT 3.5, the classroom buzzed with the hushed voices of students engrossed in their studies. Professor Greystoke droned on about the intricate uses of arcane, the reanimation fluid, yada, yada, yada. Yes, this is very telly, not very showy. It's getting everything right as far as my instructions, but the quality, I mean, we all know that 3.5 is not the best for the quality of the pros. Um, before we actually get to the others, I'm going to look at, let's look at GPT-4 just to see the difference there between the two GPT models. The oppressive stillness of Bright Souls Academy classroom seemed like a separate world compared to the whirlwind I found myself in lately. That's a much better opening sentence than, than what 3.5 gave us. Not perfect still, but better. As Professor Greystoke droned on about the practical uses and dangers of Arcane, I stole a glance at Alara. Her deep green eyes echoed a similar lack of interest as she idly doodled on the edges of her apartment parchment. So yeah, this is pretty good. Definitely on par with some of the best I've gotten from GPT. I'm not a huge fan of the pros that GPT writes, having now used Claude for a while. I much prefer Claude. And in fact, let's actually look at Claude next rather than go through all of the others. I just, I'm curious to see if I like it better. The dusty tomes of the library surrounded us as Alara and I sat huddled over the ancient text. Our voices were hushed, barely rising above a whisper. It doesn't make sense, Alara said, shaking her head. You couldn't have used both soul forging and necromancy during the ritual. No one has two powers. It's impossible. Yeah, that's, so it's definitely better. It definitely feels more immersed here. It's a little off of my instructions, which is, again, typical of Claude and the, that's the biggest problem I have with these language models. Like if I could just get Claude to follow my instructions as well as uh, the GPT models do and also keep the same quality of prose, like, ah, oh, we'd be golden. Uh, there would be no need for any other language model. But as it stands, you know, there's, there's pros and cons. So 
That's Claude. I definitely like it better than the two GPT models. Let's look at Mythomax. The room was dimly lit and the faint smell of musty old books hung heavy in the air. Lyra Thorne and her Lara, her best friend since childhood, were sitting side by side at a long wooden table. They were both students at Bright Soul Academy. This sounds a lot more like GPT 3.5, very telly, no showy. Yeah, definitely not the best here for sure. And it also ignored some of my instructions. I asked it to write in first person, which it's not doing. But it is following the actual events of the beats pretty well. So I'd say this is equivalent to roughly GPT 3.5 in its quality. Let's look at Llama. I tried to focus on Professor Greystoke's lesson, but my mind kept drifting back to the strange ritual Elric and I had discovered in the library. Ilara noticed my distraction and nudged me, her silver-trimmed red robes gleaming in the dim light of the classroom. Hey, Lyra, you okay? She whispered. You've been zoning out for a while. I shook my head, trying to clear my thoughts. Yeah, I'm fine. Just thinking about something. This is not too bad so far. It's it's kind of awkward. There, there's a sort of choppiness to it, which I don't particularly like. But I'd say it's almost a smidge better than GPT 3.5. Not as good as Claude, though. And probably not even as good as GPT 4, I'd say. But passable in certain respects. So, yeah, yeah, that's not too bad. You could potentially just run it in Llama and just to get something different and see what it gives you. I did GPT-4 already and Claude. So now we get to the last two here. I shifted in my seat, glancing at Professor Greystoke as he droned on about the uses of arcane, my eyes barely registering the words he spoke. The man was a dullard and his lectures were even duller. <laughs> my mind was elsewhere still in the strange information we'd uncovered in the library. It was impossible, I kept telling myself. There was no way I could possibly have two powers, soul forging and necromancy. Or polar opposites. One was the purification of souls, the other their destruction. I couldn't have both. But the books had said, dot, dot, dot. You're right, Professor. I raised my hand, interrupting the man's flow. It's impossible. He paused. Uh, yeah, this isn't even following my, like it starts out following my instructions, but it's definitely not following my instructions completely. And it's going off in this weird direction that is not in the story beats at all. So eh, not the best. Uh, so last but not ne least, let's look at Mistral. Oh, okay. So this one did. So in my instructions, I asked it to write a scene. Sometimes it interprets that as like a scene in a screenplay. So that's what it did here. So it says, Lyra Thorne, I can't believe what I saw last night in the library. I'm not sure how to make sense of it all. What did you see, Lyra? I found out that the creator of Soul Forging Spell is also capable of necromancy. I mean, really? How is that possible? Can someone be capable of two different magical arts? Honestly, Lyra, no one has two powers. Every Everyone either has one or none. It's not. It's just not possible. Yeah, this is very stilted. I'm not super happy with it. I'm going to actually... We're going to turn all of these off and I'm going to run just that model again and redo the prompt. And instead we'll say, oh, well, I did say words of a chapter using the following. I'm just going to run the same prompt again and see if it does anything any different. Okay. Yeah, this is different here. So Lyra Thorne's heart raced as she scurried down the dimly lit half hallway of Bright Soul Academy Library. Her red room swished behind her, leaving a trail of fabric dust in the air. She was headed straight for the back corner of the library. Yada, yada, yada. And let's get to some dialogue here. She was about to make her way back to her dorm room when she heard a soft, familiar voice behind her. You okay, Lyra? Lyra turned around, her heart leaping into her throat as she saw Elric, the undead slave who had once been a servant in her family's castle. He was sitting on the steps leading to the classroom, his face twisted with concern. I'm fine, Elric. And Lyra said, trying to sound casual. She didn't want him to worry him, but the thought of getting caught by the teachers was too frightening to ignore. Elric didn't respond, his eyes fixed on Lyra's face. She could see the fear in his eyes, and it made her feel, feel guilty. She didn't want to put him in danger, but she couldn't risk getting caught either. This is good. This is actually really good. I'd say this is almost on par with Claude, maybe even like equal with Claude. Certainly a slightly different and definitely more natural sounding than the GPT models. So I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I actually think this might be better than the GPT models. At least in this particular instance, I don't, I haven't dug deep enough with it to really understand its quirks because they all have quirks, right? Claude is creative and you have to really struggle to get it to stay on task. GPT is good at staying on task, but it's really horrible. Like you really have to play with the style to get it to 
speak well. This one, I have no idea what the quirks are, but the first time it generated, I didn't quite like it. This this time, it's it's good. I I, I like this a lot actually. So I'm I think definitely diving doing a deep dive on each of these models is in order, and I'm going to be doing that. But let me know which of these is most interesting for you. I'd say Claude is still my favorite overall because it's got other things going for it. And GPT-4 is still a good option. Llama is a surprisingly strong candidate for marketing stuff, potentially. I'd have to dive a little deeper to make sure that's consistent. And then Mistral here is the standout from all of the different open source models that we've been testing here. And last but not least, I'd like to talk a little bit about not safe for work content. I'm obviously not going to be testing those things out here because I don't want this video to be demonetized. But let's just say I have test out, tested out all of these models with that. And obviously the GPT models, the Claude models, and the ones from Meta and Google, those don't run not safe for work content. They don't do any of that. But Mistral and Mythomax and all of these others those do. And so if you want to write not safe for work content, this is the place to do it, in my opinion. If you were me, and I'll probably do a whole video about this as well, but I would probably do most of the writing in Claude and just sort of censor it in your beats. Like don't include the not safe for work parts in your beats. Have it do the majority of the heavy lifting and then come in for those specific scenes where you want to add something that's a little bit you know more gruesome or violent or erotic and you can use i would say probably use mistral but you can experiment with all of these others on on those things so that's my final word on that so let's go ahead and see how much money we just spent with all of that testing with all of those models <laughs> and it looks like we spent about 13 cents or no like 11 cents. So it's very inexpensive to use these models. You can use it to your heart's content and at most you'll probably do a dollar or so a day, depending on how hard you push it. But there's definitely, it's definitely one of the most inexpensive ways to work with AI, even though it is pay as you go, which is not my favorite. I personally prefer subscriptions that give you unlimited words like Ch ChatGPT and Claude. But even with ChatGPT and Claude, you run into chat restrictions. You, you can only do so much in a certain amount of time. And with this, you presumably don't have to, and you can just keep going as long as you're willing to pay the few cents per chat that it ends up being. So really great tool here. Definitely check it out. I'll have a link down below, and I'll see you in the next video.